Knife dope. More dope. Come and get your fix. What's up, fuckers? Your boy is back with a fresh batch of dope. Like though, that's right, people. The hits don't stop. Now I've got nothing but USA made knives here on the screen, allegedly. And we're gonna dive into all of this. But something is uh has been on my mind for about two days now, and I cannot keep a secret. That is uh this knife right here, which I shared a few videos back. This is the D Rocket Designs Loom Leaf Folder. Allegedly USA made. We've got S90V, titanium, and we've got this uh, god awful carbon fiber inlay. And that is the, um, the biggest issue I seem to be having at the moment. I'm not making no accusations, but we have started an investigation here at Knife Dope Studios, and I will leave no stone unturned. You see, because the more and more I look at this carbon fiber inlay, the more and more I am reminded of the busy carbon fiber that we typically find on Chinese OEM knives. And when I say busy, I mean the actual design itself. It just looks very busy and it is giving me Chinese OEM vibes. So I'm starting to wonder if this is one of those play on word knives where they tell you made in the USA and it's actually only 50% or maybe even assembled here in the USA. So like I mentioned, I will be doing an investigation and I will report my findings to you loyal viewers. But that ain't what we're here to talk about today, people. Not at all. Got nothing but pure confirmed American dope. And without further ado, let's get to the dope. Okay, got one that was sent to me by a new friend of the channel, Mr. Frank. It is a throwback. It's one that I have not had a chance to check out. So looking forward to this one. And then I've got a uh, an update on my uh, collection here. If you don't know, River's Edge Cutlery is responsible for, in my opinion, the best looking exclusives in the game. Uh, this is the Little Native. Then we've got the Manix 2. Now this one I actually changed the stock scales from. Um, you know, they typically have this olive drab scales and then they've got the FDE DLC finish on that 204P blade. However, when uh, Original Goat first dropped these linerless aluminum clamshell construction scales, I had to have a set and I chose to, um, to put them on this knife. You can get these same scales yourself. Just head on over there to OriginalGoat.com and be sure to use code FUCKER for 15% off your purchase. But as you can see, I have fallen heavy for the River's Edge Cutlery exclusive. And, um, you know, there was no end in sight. But there was always one knife that I was missing as it um, had eluded me up until now. And that, of course, was the Para 3. But River's Edge Cutlery had teased something a few weeks back. They said basically that there was big things to come. They didn't elaborate past that. And it had me wondering, had a bunch of us wondering, what the hell were they up to? What were they going to give us? What were they going to do? And I had my thoughts. You know, I had my ideas. I was really hoping they would have went like this and they would have given us a Native 5 in that color configuration. Could you imagine? Slightly contoured, peel ply G10, olive drab with that gorgeous, gorgeous FDE DLC coated blade. That would have been fucking fantastic. Or they could have really changed the game and went ahead and given us one of these, you know? They could have Cerakoted the titanium and given us that FDE blade. That would have been iconic. But no, that's not what they did. They decided to go this route, which is the Para 3 in the lightweight configuration. Now, they had already dropped a Para 3 in this exclusive line of theirs. Of course, I missed it. And a bunch of people missed it because it was very limited. There was very few. So I could think maybe perhaps they felt they were making up for that. You know, who knows? Uh, but nonetheless, the Para 3 Lightweight is the newest addition to the River's Edge Cutlery exclusive line. And your boy had to get it. You know I don't fuck around. 
deep in these EDC streets. And here she is. These came in at, I think, like $169. And of course, as is customary, it arrived off center. Uh, we've got this um, FRN scale, which actually Spyderco does fairly well. I've got uh, no issues with the quality of their FRN. Black hardware and pocket clip to match. And of course, that super sexy FDE DLC coated blade. Absolutely stunning. 204P is the steel. You know, that was another thing people had kind of speculated to was perhaps they were gonna change the steel. Um, believe it or not, man, a lot of people complain about the 204P. I don't get it, you know, I really don't. Does not bother me in the slightest. 204P can kind of be, I guess, um, compared closest to 20CV and M390. Um, and so here it is one more time for your viewing pleasure. My collection is now complete for River's Edge Cutlery Exclusives. This was the missing link, and she is now here at Knife Dope Studios. Okay, people, I told you it was throwback time. We got one coming to us from American Blade Works. Now, like I mentioned, also, this was sent to me by a new friend of the channel, Mr. Frank. Met Mr. Frank on, um, on Facebook, and he had this knife that I had been trying to buy I don't think he was interested in selling it, but he was gracious enough to send it down my way for me to check out. Uh, this is American Blade Works Model 1. However, this is their frame lock. Now, I believe this was the very first, uh, first configuration they gave us was a frame lock. And I thought it was kind of odd that, you know, they hadn't, hadn't brought it back since that first drop. Um, but I'll, I'll elaborate more on that momentarily. This is the solid titanium version. So we've got titanium show side as well as your lock side. Uh, single form of deployment on these Model 1s, which is just a flipper tab. Woo! Detent is dialed the fuck in. Wonderful drop point blade. We've got 7.8 inches as far as overall length. 3.25 is your blade length. Uh, these came in 20 CV. Gorgeous stonewash finish. You know, as it stands right now, I am definitely magna cutted the fuck out. So I would definitely not mind me some more 20 CV. It's crazy how things can change. You know, there was a time where people were kind of over 20 CV and over M390. Then we get magna cut and people are over magna cut. You know, at least I am. It just feels like everybody's doing it. And in my opinion, you know, there are some steels out there which are better for, for, for what I need them for. 20 CV has got a better edge retention than Magna Cut. So, you know, it's got my vote. Uh, but here it is, one more time, up close and personal. Now, I do have a couple of um, American Blade Work models in my collection, or rather knives in my collection. Uh, two to be exact. Very first one I got was this one, which is the Model 2 uh, Warren Cliff Apparatus. We've got Titanium, which I sent over to, um, or rather that I had blackened by Brian at Transparent Knives. Uh, this one I had a nice set of tits added to. This is their nested liner lock version of the knife. I think um, when you compare the Model 2 to the Model 1, I prefer the Model 2 uh, for a couple of reasons. Primarily, it's going to be the blade to handle ratio. I think it um, it is horrendous here on the Model 1, as you can see. And then here goes the Model 2. You know, still not the best, but far better than um than the model one and then most recently i also ended up adding the model one in the button lock configuration this go around they gave us this wonderfully done 3d beveled blade uh this one is in magna cut now this one also comes with no flipper and a own set of tits from the factory so i dig that i spoke to mr michael martin who is the head gentleman at american blade works and i actually inquired about the frame lock uh, and asked him, you know, if he was going to bring them back. And according to him, he plans on bringing them back sometimes within the next six month time frame. Uh, and that was from June. So keep an eye out on that and hopefully he can uh, bring them back. Now, I had mentioned the, you know, kind of mentioned that there was some issues with the first drop of these. Uh, and that was the lock rock and detent lash. This one has got lock rock. Uh, I don't think it's got detent lash. Yeah. No detent lash, just lock rock, which can actually be very, very annoying. My OCD will uh, remind me of that constantly. But I told Mr. Frank to reach out to Mr. Michael as he is known for standing behind his products 
and I can't imagine he, uh, him not being willing to, to rectify the situation. Now let's go ahead and put some knives up for some size comparison. Basically, a little bit of knife flexing. You know how the fuck we do. Gotta roll with America first. We're gonna roll like this. McNeese Mac 2, three inch rendition. Now, side note, I am currently uh, going through it right now. Can't seem to find where the fuck I put my 3.5 Tonto at. I have searched high and low and um, yeah, starting to bug out people. Next up, more American dope for your palate. We've got the most hated. And that of course is the Benchmade Narrows. I love that knife, people. You know, I fucking do. I'm sorry. What, what do you want me to tell you? All right, let's do a couple more, shall we? How about uh, how about some Taiwan vibes? Let's go with the OG Drift. Now rocking bearings, and then let's follow that up with the large drift, which is still on washers. So here we see the Model One up against those. Let's do two mo. God damn it, two mo. How about a uh, a cheap alternative to the Model One? And that's going to be the QSP Penguin Plus. Last but certainly not least, a knife that I have fallen in love with all over again. And that is going to be the TRM Shadow. So here we see the Model 1 up against those. I've got a confession, people. You know that I have not... It's been no secret for my disdain, or rather of my disdain, for uh, Access Lock Style Knives. But let me tell you, once they touch down here at Night Dope Studios and I put my own spin on it, uh, namely changing out the Omega Springs, I've started to enjoy carrying a fucking crossbar lock. I know, man. I am fucking... What do you want me to tell you? I am a fucking weirdo. But yeah, man, this one, um, I have fallen in love with it all over again. It's been in the pocket for like three or four days constantly, which is a rarity for me, you know? I tend to uh, switch out knives on the daily. When you got it bad, you got it bad. But nonetheless, thanks to Frank for sending this frame lock down my way. Hopefully, uh, the next time American Blade Works brings it to us, they'll have a couple of things tightened up, namely the lock rock, and I hope they decide to give us a set of tits on it. And then, of course, we cannot forget this beauty. Now completing my River's Edge Cutlery Exclusive Collection, that, of course, is the Para 3. Don't know how I feel about it being a lightweight, but um, I guess, uh, you know, beggars can't be choosers. But more importantly, I want to know what you fuckers think. Tell me all about it. Love you, mean it. Until the next time. Cut something. Cut someone. Just don't cut yourself. Stay dangerous, fuckers. <laughs>